So it's a tool and it allows you drawing splines over the surface of other objects. And in this case, this will be our tree. So now our cord is ready and we only have to distribute the light bulbs along our spline. And the last material is Karana light for the luminous spiral. Hi everybody, this is Render Courses and in this tutorial we will find out how to create this cool looking garland with light bulbs uh, which is wrapped around a tree and it hangs on its branches glowing so very beautifully. And I think this will help you create cooler renders on the eve of Christmas or other holidays and make more festive atmosphere in your exterior renders. So let's go ahead and start. So we have this simple scene. It's a tree from Max Tree Volume and we've put our garland on it. As we put the garland on the branches, we don't need leaves now. So I need to detach the trunk from the leaves. And I switch to editable poly or mesh mode, select our trunk, and we see that the trunk is selected without small branches. To select the rest of the branches, I click select ID. Unfortunately, we have the same ID on all branches. So I click detach. All right. And now we just hide the leaves. Right click, hide selection, and we've got ourselves a tree. Now we can work with splines. Starting from 2020, version of 3D Max features a cool tool called Freehand. You can find it in the create menu, splines, freehand. So it's a tool and it allows you drawing splines over the surface of other objects. And in this case, this will be our tree. So I go to top mode and check constraint box and using pick object indicate the object over which we will draw. So this will be our tree. And now let's try and draw a spline in a spiral. I move from outside over to the inside. You can move uh, the other way around. But the basic thing is that the spline starts or ends near the trunk. Because in real life, the cord wraps around the trunk first and the over, I'm sorry, and then over branches. All right, now let's see how how it looks in perspective. This is what it looks like. And if you get a spline with sharp corners like mine, you can switch to adaptive mode or change the amount of optimizations and optimize for more areas. And I recommend using adaptive. All right, next, there's some interesting options here. For example, straight or curved splines. And another cool option is show knots. Okay, the basic spline is ready and now we need to refine it manually. So I press Alt Q to isolate our spline. My main idea is to simulate the sagging of the spline in those areas where it clings to branches. It should be more angular there and from below it should look softer. So let's edit it manually. Right click, convert to editable spline. And now I put the top points in corner mode. And I raise the lower selection, I'm sorry, I raise the lower sections to make it look more natural. So you can convert the lower sections of the spline into Bezier. Right click, Bezier. Using zoom tool, move it apart a little bit like this. So this is a bit of a, a creative process, as you can see. All right, so I believe that's enough. All right, now to make spline render, we select and check the editable 
Sorry, enable in render and enable in viewport checkboxes. Set its thickness, let's say half a centimeter. And now we need to wrap our cord around the trunk and connect it to the main part of this garland. I also use freehand tool, select splines, freehand, add our tree to constraint, and I start drawing along the trunk. If we increase the granularity parameter to 10, there will be fewer anchor points. It's a little easier to work with. I can turn around the trunk now, so I have to break the spline sometimes. And check, start new shape to continue our spline. So now I go around the tree with the Alt key and the middle mouse button. Okay, so perhaps that's enough. Also convert to editable spline, right click, convert to editable spline, and we see yellow dots here. So those are gaps and we need to fix them. So I select them, go to spline editing, then select vertex, select to extreme points and apply fuse and well functions. So in this manner, I sort of put them together and have a single one. All right, now we need to find the end of this spline and tie them together. It seems the ending point is here. I just lower it. You can even delete it and attach it to this spline with the snaps. Use the attach function to put the spline together. Select these points and again apply fuse and weld. And it's done. Now our cord is ready and we only have to distribute the light bulbs along our spline. I prepared this light bulb model, took it from a ready-made lamp model, so I don't recommend you model from scratch. Just take a ready one and let me prepare it for work. So we have objects there. We won't complicate it too much. In fact, we need three objects, a base with an internal part, a luminous spiral and an outer envelope. If you use these trees for exterior renders, medium and long range views, and then I recommend you don't bother with a, a luminous, a spiral and just make a glowing envelope. But for detailed, I'll show you how to work with a more detailed model with a luminous spiral inside. So to do this, we will prepare three materials. First is the material of the base. We'll make a simple material, dark gray, and we'll be able to set it up later. So this will be the material of the base and the cord. So I'll point it to the base and we collect objects. Collect objects with this material we'll have using attach. Okay, next material is glass. We'll go to Karana Physical Material and you can use glass preset in Karana and then shell mode to make it render faster. So we assign this to the envelope. And the last material is Karana Light for the luminous spiral. To set a specific color, we can use Karana Color, which we'll add to the color slot. And here we'll set the color of the glow using temperature and Kelvin. 3000 Kelvins will be enough. I shall 
also assign this material to the spiral. And the glass material to the envelope. Now we put it together, attach, Know that my pivot is at the very beginning of the object. If it's not the case for you, then I recommend placing the pivot here because our light bulbs will be attached to the cord in this place here. So we go to the hierarchy, click Effect Pivot Only, and place the pivot at the very beginning of the object, right here. So now our task is to place the light bulbs along the cord. I select these two objects and isolate its section mode by pressing Alt Q and create a chaos scatter. Go to geometry, then chaos scatter, and we go ahead and create it. And we head over to settings and here select distribute target objects in the object section. This is where we'll distribute our objects. Select Spline, and the objects will distribute instance model objects. Click plus, and select bulbs. That's it. The bulbs are distributed, but now uh, not the way I would like them to be distributed. We need to adjust the scatter, so we move a little lower and choose on splines. As we see now, we don't like the direction, so the next parameter is a check next to avoid collisions so that the bulbs don't cross one another. Moving down spline scattering section, this is a distance between objects, between light bulbs. Now it's 4 centimeters, we can increase it and make it 20. And I think that should be enough. Now we need to direct the light bulbs in different directions. To do this, we go to the transformation tab, select rotation along X, from 0 to 360 and along Y also from 0 to 360. Okay, that's much better. Scatter is ready. But if we copy these trees, we can't use the scatter anymore. We need to convert it into geometry. So we click Convert to Max Geometry. And we see a message that states that 500 82 new objects will be created. Pay attention to this because if your PC is weak, you may have to reduce the number of these objects in the scatter. Just so you know. Alright, click OK. Also, these objects can be created hidden, so you have to apply the unhide all function for all objects to see all of them. Alright, now I can delete the scatter, we have the cord and the bulbs on it. And the last thing I recommend you do is to check the bulbs in, in the places where they adjoin the trunk. Because the scatter doesn't understand the interaction of our bulbs with the trunk. And it may turn out that the light bulb will be inside the tree. So I recommend that you manually turn these objects in the desired direction to avoid crossings like that. All right, now, of course, you don't have to do all of the 500 objects, but only those which are seen on the trunk. Okay, now you can put it all together into a single geometry. But in this case, I won't do it because I have only one tree in my scene. Now we can set the render and make a preview. So I go ahead and create a simple camera. Select Corona camera. And let's set a bottom up. Also, I'd like to use depth of 
field, so I check the enable box in the depth of field tab in the camera. And overwrite focus to select the focus where on the areas that we'll be focusing on. Switch the camera by pressing C and find an interesting angle. For example, this seems like a, a good angle. Now let's set up the light and materials. And as you can remember, we have leaves as well. So I apply and hide all. So we see our leaves. And next I'll set up the light with HDRI. And I will use Mozo script to work with HDRI. I'll record another video about the script for you. But for now, let's start an interactive render. Start it. So let's make the exposure a little bit brighter. I think that's enough. Actually, I forgot to assign a material to the cord. So let me just fix it real quick. And now we need to adjust the brightness of these bulbs using Corona light material. Let's try and set brightness intensity to 10. You can set a more extreme value, of course. Light material is not the best solution for lighting the stage. It's more suitable for objects. And I think that in this case, this should do. All right, so uh, so that my interactive render is not that blurry and the details are seen, we need to uncheck fast preview denoise in the settings during the render. And the last thing left for us is to choose a suitable and interesting angle. And also let's set the depth of the field. As you can remember, we are enabled it in the camera, but haven't set it up yet. In the render settings, we need to check enable in the camera tab in the depth of field section. Okay, now let's set the depth of field and I just need to set the F stop parameter. Set a lower value, five or two maybe. So depending on the depth of field we want to get. Depth of field is okay. But I think that we'll focus on these lights. All right, now let's set the depth in the camera. In the depth of field section, we can use either perspective or to see where our camera is focusing. And let's click this lock so that the interactive render doesn't jump, set the depth of field on the objects we see. All right, I haven't played around with the exposure setting a bit and enabled bloom and glare, I got this pretty cool looking result. All right, so that's all for this lesson. Hopefully it was useful to you and you enjoyed it. Subscribe to our channel for more useful tutorials and we'll definitely see you in the next video. Bye.